I want to talk earnings because we're going to be oh, hearing. Yeah. From, no, we're going to be hearing from Disney, um, Disney tomorrow. Yeah, it's a big media week this week. So. And so this is your, this is Google your, this is like. Today. I'm sorry. This, this is, is your, this this is 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 your Super, Bowl. Super Bowl. Right? This is your like, Super Bowl. Yeah. So what do you expect? Uh, I think I think Disney's going to have. I think they're going to have a decent uh, decent quarter. I think we're going to. I think the expectations for them, uh, they've, always sort of, they've always sort of been in line, and I think they've, uh, it's a surprise here and there. I think the bigger picture for Disney is always going to be, going forward, is going to be how their streaming business is going to fare. Are they going to be on time for an end-of-the-year launch? I think that's going to be hard. I think they're discovering that creating a streaming service is much harder than it looks, despite the fact that they're a big professional company with lots of resources. Um, that's going to be a big thing. And, you know, the, the management team that's in charge, they've got some Fox people rolling into it now, uh, get a better sense of what the programming looks like, right? Because they're and trying to program get any for this on specific... the conference call? Well, no, they're going to be... At, that's one thing they've been more willing to open up about, right? In terms of who's in charge, what they're doing, what the kind of, uh, what, what the kind of strategy for the content is going to be. That last part, I don't know as much about. I think in terms of the originals that they want to produce for just the streaming service, how they weigh that against... Well, do we license some of our stuff and out question, to other services? Are they going to cannibalize some of their franchises, right, right exactly. that, that people actually pay for in the movie theater, for instance, like the Star Wars franchise? The Star Wars franchise. If they do sort of a live action series thing, you know, does that cannibalize the original franchise? And they need, and the thing, they still need theatrical. That's a huge part of their, their business. So they still need the what? The theatrical, oh, right? The theatrical yeah. releases, because that's going to be. Having having your movie in the theater is not it's not just for the for the stars it's there's a it's a huge marketing vehicle. I, right? I, I never thought they'd be kind of jumping the gun on the theatrical releases. Right? I don't think so, but you know, uh, Bob Iger really when they when they announce first of all the Fox deal the, the move to streaming that really surprised me not because it's not the the, the next obvious step if you're in the media business, but the, he was willing to go so right. whole hog on it. You know, I think that was interesting to me. Push this part of the story forward. So the one big question mark that's hanging out there over Disney right now, I would argue, is the sale of the, the RSNs. The it's RSNs. The regional right. sports channels right. that were acquired as part of the Fox deal. And they now have to sell them because of approval, To get the regulatory approval. Right. However, and the reason why it's so important is when Comcast had wanted, the parent company of this network had wanted to bid for it, yes. they had a much lower valuation effectively on those RSNs in yep. terms of how, why, why they were willing to pay what they were willing to pay. Disney put a much higher, higher premium, premium right. on those. No, you, you nailed on, it. On, on those channels. And so the question is, are they going to get the higher premium or not? They're, they're, <laughs> so chances are, I think they're not going to get it. RSNs is a tough, tough business right now. Although the reason would a digital why, buyer potentially come in? A digital buyer could buy, come in, but what's tricky like about the Amazon. RSNs is that they don't have a lot of the digital rights locked up either, right? So an RSN is basically a middleman um, kind of rights manager, right? So you're buying rights from the teams, and then you're basically selling them to the cable, the cable systems or whatever the, the local area is going to be. And so you're getting squeezed on, one, on both sides, right? So the, you have contractually obligated increases from the leagues, from the, right. from the team owners, so whereas with the, with the cable guys, they're just like, I can't pay you anymore. It's already so expensive. They're essentially pharmacy benefits managers, the PBMs. Exactly. Oh, right. that's a great way of putting yeah. it. Yeah. Um, are not going to exist down the road. And I, I, think, I, think, I think Comcast sort of figured that out in a way that made sense in terms of how they're going to bid. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some reports out there now that in some of the, the, the bidders for the RSNs right now, they're coming in pretty low. I think it was valued at 20. They're looking for 20 billion for the full lot. I think they're getting something like 15 now, right? So, uh, I mean, it, it's still a bidding process, so that can right. go up.